Plashet Wood in the low weald of East Sussex is 150 hectares in size. The wood is owned by a charitable trust and as well as having objectives for biodiversity and timber production, it also has a strong commitment in providing education to local schools and groups. The woodland is dominated by oak high forest. The majority of the oak is about 120 years old. Over the last 25 years, there has been a concerted effort to introduce a younger age class of oak into the wood. This has been done by felling groups of mature trees, approximately 0.2 hectares in size, and replanting with young oak. Natural regeneration has been favoured where it has been found. Approximately one area has been cleared and replanted every other year for the last 25 years, as well as new planting in areas where conifers have been removed. Oak, along with the majority of our native broadleaves, are vulnerable to bark stripping by grey squirrels in the spring and summer. Grey squirrels were introduced at the end of the 19th century and have pushed out the native reds through their aggressive nature as well as carrying a pox that they are immune to. Oak is particularly vulnerable to damage by grey squirrels. As foresters and landowners know, there are many hectares of broadleaf trees that have been painstakingly planted and nurtured that have, at about 15 years old, been devastated by grey squirrels. Though I've seen a buzzard kill a grey squirrel, there are currently no reliable natural predators to control numbers in England. There are therefore many vulnerable trees in the woodland and in years to come there will be more. Grey squirrels are slowly pushing the remaining red squirrels out of their natural habitat. Currently the front line is in the Lake District in Northumberland, as well as there being pockets of protected red squirrels in Brownsea Island in Poole Harbour, the Isle of Wight, Formby in Lancashire and the Isle of Anglesey. Grey squirrels do not kill trees but severely restrict their ability to grow unhindered into a tall and therefore ultimately a magnificent tree. Whether it is required for its landscape value, timber production, habitat value or pure majesty. Though it is not known why grey squirrels strip the bark off trees, it is recognised that where numbers are sufficiently reduced, the amount of damage is greatly reduced. Therefore in order to prevent damage in plastic wood, as it is elsewhere, it is necessary to reduce the number of grey squirrels. We used to use warfarin and hoppers but stopped about seven years ago as we did not like releasing poison into the environment or were unsure about its effectiveness. Warfarin is now no longer allowed to be used in woodlands. The options for controlling numbers is to trap or shoot them. There are various new traps coming into the market that will hopefully make the job easier. At Plashet we've been shooting as the main way of reducing numbers over the last seven years. We found shooting cheaper than trapping. We started using James to shoot grey squirrels in 2009. He says it is the best sport there is and requires all his stalking skills to listen for and locate a squirrel. To date he has been paid £5 per grey squirrel shot, though this has been increased this last year. This does not fully reflect the time taken but acknowledges the importance the woodland owners have to controlling numbers. Between 250 and 400 are shot each year. The wood could be cleared of grey squirrels by the end of April, but by the end of May there would be a healthy population in residence. Therefore the emphasis on shooting is in the summer months when the damage is done. This is when the sap is up and the bark sweeter. Due to the importance of keeping numbers under control and to ensure that we always have someone who is shooting on a regular basis, we have recruited James's nephew Ben to help him out. Last summer when James was away a few trees were damaged. If we want future generations to enjoy 120 year old oaks like these, we must do all we can to stop grey squirrels damaging our young trees. I would like to acknowledge Natural England, the RFS, the owners of the wood and James for help in making this video. Thank you very much.